Moving on now, and one thing cattle producers don't have to worry about is pests eating their profits. Not the case, however, for soybean producers. In late spring of last year, entomologists in Nebraska and surrounding states received reports of dead soybean plants consistent with soybean gall midge infestations. UNL entomologist Dr. Justin McMechan came on the show to give some insight into this relatively new pest and what it means for farmers come next season. It's a new pest, but it's been around since 2011. We just didn't have a name for it. Uh, it showed up late in the season, usually in August, on uh, damaged or uh, disease-infected crops, uh, soybeans. And so uh, raised little concern for us. Uh, we, we didn't uh, do a lot of research on it because we didn't figure there was much economic losses. And it was uh, 2016 and 17, uh, showed up again, then 18, it showed up quite early, about two months ahead of when we would expect it in, in late June. And it was already killing plants in late June. Wow. Uh, and so uh, a large effort amongst multiple states to figure out, first of all, where it was and how much uh, the losses were uh, in that early in the season. And in fact, four states were infested. So uh, here in Nebraska, we had 23 counties infested. Uh, Iowa was, was infested. Uh, the top the little bottom corner of, of Minnesota and South Dakota. Um, and uh, all the states were seeing very similar losses. Uh, and so it raised quite a concern over um, basically it's potential to be a primary pest and not some secondary of, of um, disease or mechanical damage. Mm -hmm. Any of those states feeling the effects more than others? I, I'd say here in Nebraska we're definitely feeling the effects. I can't fully speak for the other states although mm -hmm. we've been in conversation but it was widespread throughout this this state mostly the eastern half of the state uh, tailed off as we went south. Uh, I actually took uh, yield data on on the field just south of the eastern Nebraska Research and Extension Center uh, and they did not have yield for the first hundred feet into the field. Uh, so I, I can guarantee you that producer felt it, and there was still a 20% loss at 400 feet, which we consider we're off the field edge. Uh, so producers are feeling it. Uh, we're having a roundtable discussion to figure out how many of them are feeling those effects. So what's the best way to manage the uh, soybean gall midge if a producer finds it in their field? Yeah, you know, I wish we had good management strategies for them. Uh, it's so new to us, and we've had such little time to study it, basically this past season, um, that we don't have a lot of good recommendations. Uh, we are very being very proactive this spring. Uh, so in August, we collected the adults for the first time and, and got a chance to see those. And so we're confident we can track emergence this spring of those adults. Uh, we're not sure where they're coming from, whether it's the existing soybean field that was infested, a field border, maybe it's where the wooded areas are. Uh, but regardless, we'll, we'll be able to track those when they emerge. And if producers have had issues, that might be the time when we catch those first ones emerging to apply an insecticide. Uh, we're looking at planting dates as part of some of the grants we've submitted. Um, so we're trying to get a mix of both cultural and those uh, preventative pest management practices. Uh, so we're not relying totally on insecticides going forward. Mm -hmm. Only soybeans or anybody else need to be concerned? Only soybeans so far, which I expect it to stay like that. Uh, we do know of other species around the globe like this uh, that we already know are not. Um, they're related to this species, but distantly related enough to call this a new species. Um, and their insights are helping us a little bit. We have to be careful, though, that's a, one's Japan. So making interpretations from Japan to here is tough. Sure. So what does it look like? Uh, so uh, the, the adults are about a quarter of an inch long. Um, that's what a lot of people haven't seen. I'll talk about the maggots in a second. But they're about a quarter of an inch long, and they have these black and white bands down their legs. They look a lot like a mosquito, mm -hmm. uh, except they're quite small. And, and if their wings pick up, you can see this orange abdomen. Um, that's really what the, the larvae look like, or the maggots as well. Uh, they transition from white to orange as they go through the three instars, or we assume three instars. Uh, and people find them in the base of the soybean plants. So uh, for producers walking their field this spring, um, you know, after the plants are about the V5 stage, uh, that's when we started to see some problems. And the plants are snapping off or appear dark at the soil surface. I'd recommend they pick those up and split them open. Uh, and if they do have soybean gummage, they'll start finding those larvae uh, if it's like last year. Uh, and so they're little maggots with 11 segments in them that... Uh, pretty easy to see and they can get into pretty significant numbers and we had a one plant with 150 larvae on it so no kidding. they're wow. there you can find them yeah, yeah no kidding all right so if somebody suspects that they're having trouble with this pest is it something where they should call somebody out to take a look at it or maybe send in a specimen mm -hmm. to uh, to the to the office to get it to get it checked out what do you suggest yeah we're reasonably confident even based on a photo that we're probably looking at the same thing so if a producer suspects it in their county or a crop consultant or egg professional if they snap a photo and send it to me via email or through my Twitter uh, handle, I'd 
can likely go from there. Uh, and if they've seen it, that's great for us to know where it is. We're still trying to figure out where it is in this state. Sure. Uh, so any, anybody communicating with us on it will be helpful.